So Rangers get back to winning ways with a victory over Hibs yesterday. Ibrox, uh, unfortunately, Celtic have also won today to go back to the top of the league and will be leading the SPFL going into the Old Firm game next Sunday. But before we talk about yesterday's game and the performances by the players, I just want to talk a little bit about how the standard of punditry the standard of social media, the behaviour of clubs in this in Scotland is making Scotland and the league look utterly ridiculous. Now, I know down south there is rivalries between Arsenal and Tottenham. There is rivalries between Liverpool and Everton. There is rivalries between Liverpool and Manchester United, between Newcastle and Sunderland, between Leeds and Manchester United, between Chelsea and Leeds, bizarrely. Um, but... And I know that none of those rivalries compare to the old firm between the hatred between Celtic and Rangers. I get that. And there is hatred between Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund, between Barcelona and between Real Madrid, between Inter and AC, between Inter Milan and Juventus across the continent. But one thing that kind of goes across all of that is, I know, for example, down here, Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville have cracks at each other on Sky Sports all the time about Liverpool and Manchester United. But on the whole, they can actually bring it back to reality. They can treat being able to pundit a game based on what they actually see, what they actually watch, what actually happens. And they don't allow their one-eyed uh, partisan judgment to overcloud them actually commenting on a game and watching a game. Roy Keane is another classic example of that. I know he's an ex-Celtic player, but Keane is someone who, you know, Manchester United through and through, but will still criticise Manchester United, will still call them out, and will still, you know, will still, you know... Uh, admit when they've done something wrong or admit when there's a penalty or admit when they've cheated. He does all that. But I've got to say that the standard of punditry and the standard of uh, commenting from other teams as regards Rangers and as regards Scottish football in general is becoming beyond a joke. Now, we're gonna. there's two incidents yesterday that I want to talk of. First of all, I want to talk about Michael Stewart, who is without a shadow of a doubt worse than even Chris Sutton as a pundit. He is just becoming beyond a joke as a pundit. Um, you know, I would love, I'd actually love to get Michael Stewart on the podcast and talk to him about how he thinks as he does, because the guy is incapable of taking any decision and treating it impartially. He is incapable of actually, I don't know, it's kind of like he doesn't understand the rules of football. He genuinely has not got a clue about what the rules of football are. Um, you listen to some of what he says about penalty decisions, about sendings off, and you sit there and you just think, did you actually play this game? And if you did play this game, do you actually understand the rules of the game that you were playing? Because the comments you make, what you say, makes you look incredibly silly. Because your your punditry is absolutely pathetic. He is just letting his hatred of Rangers, letting his hatred of certain clubs govern what he says. And like I said, I know down south that Gary Neville hates Liverpool, Carragher hates Man United, but they're both big enough to admit when something goes for that team, if it is actually a decision that is rightly given for their team, because they're kind of professional. Um, Michael Stewart yesterday made these comments about that penalty, and we'll look at the penalty decision in a minute. Um, that's a, it's a collision, but it's not a penalty kick. If you're going to give a penalty for the, I mean, give up. The ball is going over his head, and Triantas is trying to jump for it, and he's got a booking and a yellow card against him. That is nonsense. He will be feeling hard done by. The thing is, if you think that is a penalty kick, then you have to understand there is an element of risk. But somebody doesn't have to be blamed. There is a coming together and he's trying to head the ball. This is coming from the same man that when that head clash between Johnston and Triantes happened, when Celtic played Hibs, said it was a penalty. Yet what he's describing as a reason not to give the Rangers penalty is exactly the same as what happened when Celtic got their penalty against Hibernian. So... He just genuinely, clearly has zero clue what he's talking about. He genuinely is making himself look incredibly stupid with what he says. I mean, it genuinely, it just beggars belief that this man has such a, a small understanding of what the rules of the game are. You know, you watch that decision back yesterday. The arm swings, it punches him in the face. Therefore, it is a penalty. It is therefore, and it is even checked on VAR. So if you've got two VAR officials sitting in Clydesdale House and you've got the ref and the referee of all three people take a look and all three independently are stating that that is a penalty. And Michael Stewart, you are wrong. They are right. They are the ones who referee the games. They are the ones who understand the rules of the game. Yeah, yes, the referee wasn't great yesterday. I'll give you that. But that was one thing he did get right yesterday. Now, 
we'll, we'll come to the Hibs tweet in a minute. But if you look there, his arm is in the face of the Rangers player. It is smacking him in the face. Therefore, it is a penalty, whether you like it or not. Now, whether it's a soft penalty, a stonewall penalty, uh, not a penalty, whatever it is, it, if it happens to Rangers, it is a cheating thing. And it's becoming ridiculous now that fans cannot... And not just fans, but analysts and and people who comment on the Scottish game cannot do it in a level-headed way that actually is using the laws of the game. And like I said, you come down south of the border, you watch the EPL, you watch the championship, you have pundits who don't like other teams, but they still will give fair comment on other teams' performances and whether or not it's a penalty and don't allow their bias to work against them. It's the same way that Stewart, that Sutton... And to some extent, Chris Boyd as well, allow their bias to work against them. And they're making the Scottish game look an absolute joke. Now, I would urge Sky to get rid of all of them and to bring in some fair, level-minded pundits because at the end of the day, these pundits are making Sky TV and making the Scottish game look very, very silly indeed. Now, let's move on. This tweet that went out yesterday from Hibs is absolutely pathetic. It is utterly pathetic. I mean, it's almost up there with the uh, with the Matt incident from their from their Edinburgh neighbours. But penalty to Rangers who had twenty minutes. Now, according to reports in this morning's media, that tweet could actually land Hibernian in a whole load of trouble, as it is insinuating obviously that there is cheating going on. That the game is somehow fixed. The penalty has to be given to Rangers against them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, the club need to take a long, hard look at themselves. You know, again, just think for a minute. And I know this is this is hard for some people, but, you know, think about how you're making the game look. Think about how you're actually making the Scottish game look. Now, you could think that, yes, it's not a penalty. You could think that you disagree fundamentally with the fact that it's a penalty. That is fine. And you're entitled to your own opinions, right? That is fine. Football is a game of opinions. We all have different opinions on the game. You know, something that some people seem to not realise. You know, yesterday we've, uh, this is a channel I've taken, the the channel's, channel's X account is now deleted due to the online abuse from some Rangers fans who yesterday were, who their attitude and their comments and their way of addressing me and the channel yesterday over comments that we made about Sid Odessa's performance yesterday not being as good as they thought it was, were utterly ridiculous. Um just out of order, therefore, our X account is now no longer in existence, which is very sad indeed. Um, and it's sad that some Rangers fans think it's acceptable to talk to other Rangers fans like that. It's just pathetic. Uh, but, you know, this tweet from Hibernian Football Club is absolutely pathetic. It really genuinely does show the game up. And it's part of this wider thing that I'm talking about. You know, if we are to get our game north of the border, taken seriously by TV companies, by other FAs, by European football teams, by European football, then we need to stop with this ridiculous, utter crap that comes out of some teams and some analysts' mouths, that there is a conspiracy, that there is a, you know, a whole situation where there is a, there is a, there's a plot in line to cheat to get Rangers to win titles. I tell you what, if it is, if there is a conspiracy, it is the most shittiest conspiracy that's ever been founded. One title in, you know, in the last 12 years is just, it's the worst conspiracy we've ever heard of. I mean, it genuinely is a shit conspiracy because, you know, if it, if it had been a proper one, we'd have won a hell of a lot more titles and trophies and it'd been fixed beyond belief. I mean, it's just a joke, an utter joke. So, look, I know everyone hates us, we don't care, fine, but the end of the day, people have got to start to think about what they are doing to our game, how they are making our game look. And I'll tell you something, as someone who lives in England, someone who supports Rangers down south of the border, the stick and the piss you get taken out of you down here about supporting a Scottish football club is ridiculous. Oh, it's a joke league. Oh, it's a farmer's league. Oh, you know, it, it's just, it, it's an absolute joke, the standard of football up there, blah, blah, blah. That's all you ever hear. And these tweets and by Hibs and Hearts with the Matt thing and now Michael Stewart with his ridiculous comments are all adding to that narrative of making our game look ridiculous. And they need to grow up. They need to actually start behaving like adults and grow the fuck up. Seriously, grow up. 
you know, behave like a professional pundit, behave like a professional football club, not like a bunch of toddlers who can't get their own way. So they're throwing themselves to the ground, having a stop and screaming. It's ridiculous. It needs to stop. And it needs, and I, look, I know that whatever I say doesn't really matter, genuinely doesn't. But look, this needs to improve. And this needs to be sorted out because if it doesn't, it's going to continue to make our game look ridiculous. The SFA need to act. I know that's a big ask because the SFA are looking like they are singularly in a, unable to run our game in an effective manner and looking like you fit for purpose. The same for the SPFL. There needs to be a genuine massive root, root and branch overhaul of the FA, of the league, of the teams in this country to actually start behaving like a professional football association, a professional league and professional teams because it is not there at this moment in time. That is just a plain fact at this at this present moment. Well, as for the game yesterday, a 3-1 victory over Hibs, a, a decent performance. I think there's a lot of ridiculous, uh, there is comments, you know, it was a brilliant, but it wasn't a brilliant performance at all. It was a decent performance. It wasn't a great performance. It wasn't a bad performance. It was a, it was a good performance. That was it. Does it need to be better next week against them? Yes, it does. There needs to be a massive step up in quality um, of everything, I think, across the board if we're going to obviously come out of, of victorious against them next week. Um, you know, I think there was players who really stood out for me yesterday. Um, you know, I thought that uh, Suter was absolutely brilliant at the back. He was a colossus. I thought that Tav did very well with his goal. Uh, I thought Tav played well across the whole game and yet you've still got people saying he was crap. Don't get it. Um, I thought Diamande did very well with the ball, used the ball well, was always available for the ball. I thought Lunny was outstanding again yesterday, ran the, ran the midfield, dominated. The, dominated. I thought Silva played fairly decently well as well. I think a lot of our fans don't understand Silva and understand what he brings to the team. Um, Camwell, I thought, was brilliant yesterday. Camwell was man of the match by an absolute marvel. I, mean, I don't get the Dessas was man of the match because Camwell was brilliant. It was Camwell's cross that led to Dessas' goal. It was Camwell that was putting the press on. It was Camwell that was creating the chances. It was Camwell that took, took a couple of shots that could have easily gone in. For me, Camwell was absolutely outstanding yesterday. Well, he was good, very good. He wasn't outstanding. He was very good. He's another one that, you know, another level up, could go another level up. Um, Matondo's goal was absolutely brilliant, absolutely superb. Puts it on his right foot, smashes it in the top corner. Um, I thought he did very well indeed. I thought that's um I thought that you know, if you look at their goal as well, it is again down to Borna Barisic. He goes backwards when he should have gone forwards. Diamande was open. If he plays the ball to Diamande, the trouble's gone, it's over. Borna turns around, loses the ball, and it, that all leads to a goal. Yes, there's a number of other mistakes take place after that, but again, I thought Borna was fairly shocking yesterday. Some of his crossing was pretty poor, very average indeed. I really do hope that Ridvan is back. For the next game. Uh, Scott Wright was very average as well. Um, Samuel Dessers, yes, it was a good finish, but again, he misses a whole load of sitters. And yes, you know, he worked hard off the ball. He ran around a lot. Yes, he did that very well. Get that. But again, he's missing sitters. Do you trust him against Celtic when a chance falls his way to put the ball on the back of the net on a regular basis? I don't. I have zero trust in that man whatsoever to actually deliver for our club. Um, yes, he scored yesterday. But he could do a whole lot better. I think, you know, if you're seeing Dessas has been this absolute top-class striker, absolute, and I, I mean, one of the tweets that I got yesterday was utterly ridiculous. There was a guy who tweeted to me that, that Rangers should be grateful they've got one of the best strikers in Europe um, who tore up Serie A, scored seven goals, he uh, tore Serie A up, uh, was the best striker in Holland with a fire note, scored nine goals, the majority of his goals coming in the Conference League, in, in a weak Conference League. Yeah, he's the best, one of the best strikers in Europe. Yeah, OK, that's fine. You, you keep believing that. I think he was drunk. But look, overall, Dessas don't trust him. Do not trust him at all for that game. Seema being back, I think, is a big bonus. I personally put Seema up top against Celtic. Uh, Kamar Roof apparently was not injured. He just was not ready to play 90 minutes, therefore not ready to play. So do we see Kamar Roof against Celtic? That is a possibility, I think. You know, Roof is another one I would trust a lot more if the chance falls to him. You know, chances are going to be a premium against them next week. We're not going to create the amount of chances you do against Hibs, against Hearts, Ross County, St. Johnston, St. Mirren, all those other Diddy teams. You're not going to create the same amount of chances. So when we take chances, we've got to take them. And that's why I worry about Serie Odessa's uh, next week against Celtic. And I think yesterday he misses a couple of absolute sitters yet again. He's just not up to it. And I'm sorry, if you think he is, great, that's your opinion. And you're entitled to your opinion. Of course you are. I just think as a football club, 
we deserve better than him and he is not up to the standards we require for our football club to kick on to become league champion season after season to compete in Europe guys tell me this when has he scored a goal that actually matters Parkhead away awful the best one doesn't count because there was no pressure on us in that game nobody expected us to win that game okay Benfica did he score no he didn't okay did he miss chances that could have put us through yes he did so at the end of the day, when the pressure is on, when it is really on, he doesn't deliver. You know, please tell me when he's delivered. If, if, if you're a big fan of his, and I know there's some of those out there that, that love him to bit, Dessers or um, podcaster calls her Dessers, fucking moron that she is. But let me know, okay, guys, when is when 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 has he done it under pressure? When has he done it and delivered under pressure? Let me know, because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. Really genuinely haven't seen it. I would take Alfie back over him. I really genuinely would. Now, the focus has got to be, I mean, it's good that we haven't got any games this week. It's good that, that Philly Clermont has a whole week with this squad to get them ready, to get them prepared, to get them sorted, to get them organised, to go over tactics and, and, and analyse and really look and get them in the best possible place for that game next Sunday, which will be here on the channel, of course. It'll be tough. It will be tough. I mean, yes, they're not a good team. Yes, they're not the great team that they're not the good team that Ange Postacoglu had. They're certainly not that ability. And yes, they beat Livingston today 3-0, but it's Livingston who are crap. So we've got to prep. We've got to be ready. And it's good that we've got the week to sort this out. Well, guys, let me know what you think of the comments. Let me think what you think of the videos. Like I said, if you disagree with anything, please feel free, but keep it constructive. As always, thank you so much for your uh, comments. Apologies for calling someone a moron. I'm just getting angry. Um, as always, guys, on the way out, two things I ask of you. Number one is to smash the like because likes help videos. And number two is to remember always, we are the people.